This is going to be my first official game review. I have done many gameplay videos that focus on talking about things that are not related to the footage. But now we'll start a series of game reviews that go from very old school games to modern titles that bring up interesting points to discuss. Metal Gear Survive is a perfect example of a game that allows for a very interesting topic. That is the topic of the nature of the corporate world and human nature as well. This is not your typical review. The game is going to be reviewed on several external factors. But I can tell you right away that the game is good. It creates a very unique and welcome sense of urgency and fear when faced with hordes of zombies and empty oxygen tanks. There is also a huge sense of dreadfulness that you feel when moving around the map. It's like looking at Metal Gear Solid 5 through the eyes of Edgar Allan Poe. I love the sense of dreadfulness you get when you're outside the mist combined with the sense of urgency and anxiety that you get when you're inside of it. Hunting is fairly straightforward, but definitely a fun part of the game. Those who complain about the gathering process being too slow, didn't even take the time to look into the skill system and see the upgrade. Once this upgrade has been activated, the pickup process is much faster. Weapons are great in survive and many are not recycled from the phantom pain like the machete, the spear and the bat. Weapons can be hard to use at first, but you can also level your skills up to use them efficiently. If your character feels slow, weak and inexperienced at first, it's because you need to upgrade all of those skills as you go along. If you played the phantom pain, just think of your soldier as a C rank that needs to work his way up to B, a, S, S+, plus, and so on. Your stamina is a great feature and definitely an important one to maintain the tension in the game. You can't abuse your running or even your crawling moves. Crawling requires significant physical effort in real life and the game made sure to remind you of that. There's also a nice healing system that is similar to what we found back in Snake Eater. Here you get a simple representation of each limb and the ailments that need to be cured. Base camp development allows you to build the camp with any layout you prefer within the boundaries allowed. You can start farming, you can build tents, stoves, water tanks and many other useful resources. You also get to rescue people and some familiar faces from mother base will become part of your community of survivors. I love how they implemented the few areas from the Phantom Pain in to survive. Wormholes affecting Earth and bringing in entire chunks of land actually makes sense as you find yourself in a familiar area that is surrounded by unfamiliar territory. The feeling I got from finding these locations that were once full of life was a huge fan service. It felt similar to revisiting Dark Souls 1's areas in Dark Souls 3 but here you get an even more powerful sense of dread and desolation. It was a superb Metal Gear Solid 5 fan service to those of us who find Metal Gear Solid 5 to be one of the best games ever made. Seeing these areas deteriorated and covered in that eerie Silent Hill fog was a great experience during the entire campaign. Once you start exploring and finding locations from the Phantom Pain, you start to get a sense of what Konami was going for. The game feels like the Phantom Pain has been engulfed by Silent Hill. Yes, it really does have that atmosphere of Silent Hill when you enter the fog and you can once again hear the sound effects from PT when you enter Dawayalo. Some reviews for this game are fueled by hatred towards Konami without any unbiased analysis. They cling into every single negative detail and blow it out of proportion. A few of these reviewers say things like, your vision gets blurred when you're hungry and it's impossible to play the game this way. The truth is that you have to be pretty lazy at understanding the game to be playing it with blurred vision all the time. The process of hunting, cooking, eating the food, while slow at first, is quite fast after some upgrades and a couple of hunts will last you for a few explorations. Even at the earliest stages of the game, you can avoid the blurred vision most of the time. 
Once you play for about two or three hours, this is hardly an issue. It simply maintains its presence as part of the survival mechanism without being a burden. Instead, this greatly enhances the sense of urgency and anxiety that you feel during zombie horde attacks while you're out exploring the landscape inside the mist. Then you have those who complain that the character runs out of stamina too fast. The stamina issue is only noticeable at the very beginning, and even then, you can learn how to take a quick break and avoid exhaustion. As you can see in this video, stamina for running becomes quite good after a while. It's important to note that stamina does deplete much faster while you're in the fog. That is one of the great things about the game. It adds the element of fear and anxiety when you have a horde of zombies running at you and your character has to stop to catch his breath. Then you have others to say things like zombies are dumb and easy to avoid. Yes, they are dumb. They are zombies. They're supposed to be brain dead. The zombies in this game have about the same field of vision as a regular Metal Gear Solid 5 soldier. And they're smart enough at times, well it seems their field of vision is completely narrow in other situations. Well guess what, it's a game, and AI in most games has yet to prove to be anything special. The enemies in this game are as smart as zombies have to be. No more, no less. Metal Gear Survive uses a lot of elements from Metal Gear Solid 5, but it has plenty of originality to offer. It has a fairly robust system for item creation, item development, structure development, and health recovery. It also provides a very tense mood in combat due to the survival elements. I found Metal Gear Solid 5 to be one of the best games ever made. Not just in the Metal Gear series, but in general. So Metal Gear Survive was definitely a welcome addition to the Fox Engine catalog. I can understand how some people say this could have been a DLC for Metal Gear Solid 5, but the main campaign is long enough to stand on its own. There's also the fact that the map is not 100% copied from the Phantom Pain. All they did was include some key areas from the original map, but the terrain in Survive is different from the terrain in Metal Gear Solid 5. Don't believe those reviews that tell you the areas are exactly the same. That is a blatant lie from reviewers who would rather follow the hate trend than give a genuine review of a game. Of course there are some flaws to the game. No one said it was perfect. For one, the voice acting is horrendous to say the least. I wouldn't even classify it as C acting. It's done by amateurs and it always feels like a joke. The plot is okay, but ruined by terrible acting. Like I said before, it's a video game and it has flaws like any other game, but the overall gameplay experience is very entertaining. I wasn't cursing at Konami or trying to sabotage your new release when I heard about it. If they make a good game, I play it, and if they make a bad game, I try it and I discard it. I don't owe Konami or Kojima anything. They made products that I have purchased and enjoyed. The moment that transaction takes place, we owe each other absolutely nothing. Unfortunately, many fans of Metal Gear can't bring themselves to admit that human nature is the reason why their beloved franchise changed. The reality is that artists have to pay bills and corporations have to pay bills. Artists often get caught up in their success and they start to spend their earnings on luxury. This compromises their art because they need to keep making money to support their lifestyles. And the exact same thing happens to corporations. Ya basta de negocios. Traiga las chicas. The truth is that there are only two things that can happen when you have a product that grows popular enough. The first one is that companies find ways to capitalize on it as much as possible, and they manage to retain most of their audience to maximize profit. The second is that the creator decides to quit at the top and preserve the emotional value of their creation. The latter usually happens only when the creator holds the legal rights to their work, but in this case, it's the corporate world that holds the rights to it. In Kojima's case, 
He was already too deep in the corporate world to consider quitting at the very top. He wanted more, and he beat more than he could chew by trying to outdo himself after Metal Gear Solid 4. Metal Gear 5 is by far my favorite Metal Gear game, but that is entirely because of the gameplay. The story, the characters, and the way the narrative flows were all mediocre to say the least. The revelations about Venom and Big Boss are a nice twist that I loved and I found to be very interesting. But other than that, Kojima showed the world that he was far from interested in quitting at the peak of the series when he released an open world game with microtransactions and Hollywood stars. With that said, the more popular a game is, the more expensive it becomes to produce higher quality games to follow up on a successful release. This means that on top of having to make money for development, the company owners also want to make sure that they can get enough return on investment to pocket some of that money for their personal needs. I also gamble like a degenerate, I drink like a fish. Don't forget that these people are not in it for you. They're in it for the money, and they will find a nice fat cow to milk for that purpose. That cow was Kojima in Konami's case. and their profitable product was called Metal Gear. When it comes to the world of business in the modern era, everyone gets the chance to choose who they want to be in life. You can either be the corporate vampire that makes money in a legal but extremely shady way, or you can be an employee to those corporations. Both sides have their advantages and their disadvantages. Metal Gear as we used to know it died because it failed to pass the corporate test. Seemingly, it was too niche of a product to be tainted by microtransactions and lack of story. Unfortunately, when a popular product reaches a certain level of profitability, it has to continue moving up or it gets replaced by something else. Konami took their chances by thinking the hardcore Metal Gear audience would follow them through the process of turning Metal Gear into a mainstream money-making machine. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for a lot of people, and Metal Gear Survive is accused of being a terrible game for all the wrong reasons. For starters, Kojima apparently started suffering from the nearly inevitable diva complex that is often developed by people who are seen as genius minds by their loyal fan base. I require your own. That you kneel. Kojima was basically turning into the Axel Rose of the gaming industry demanding way too much time and money from Konami to finish his latest masterpiece. The truth is that Kojima is strongly responsible for the problems Metal Gear is facing now. But no one in particular is entirely to blame. The true enemy of Metal Gear was human nature. The greedy nature of wanting more and more and more. See, the way things worked is that while Konami showed its greedy nature by wanting to milk the cow as much as possible, it seems that Kojima was also becoming the unavoidable larger-than-life creator that demanded all the time and money he could spend, while the corporate suits waited for the next masterpiece to be finished. People can blame Konami all they want, but Kojima was definitely making some ridiculous corporate-driven decisions by bringing in a popular Hollywood actor to replace David Hayter, a man who had given his voice to both Solid Snake and Big Boss for over 15 years. When someone is willing to dismiss that kind of bond, they're definitely showing their true intentions with their creation. Some people try to defend Kojima by saying he did this because Venom Snake would have made no sense with Hayter's voice, the argument is quickly destroyed by the fact that Sutherland also played Naked Snake, aka Big Boss, in Ground Zero. The fact is that Konami treated Metal Gear with respect by ensuring fans that survive was a spin-off, but the fans had been blinded by the one-sided stories of Konami being an evil, greedy corporation and Kojima being the genius mind that had been betrayed and mistreated by the degenerate Konami executives. Never forget that there are always two sides to every story. The word survive fits perfectly in the game title for more than just the mechanics and the story. It's the post-Kojima survival of the series. Think of it this way. 
Metal Gear went through the exact same change as Star Wars did. The creator of the saga is no longer in charge of anything related to the series. He sold Disney the rights to do as they pleased with the story. The only difference is that Lucas did this in an amicable situation. The fact remains the same though. Star Wars Universe belongs to Disney now, and people are still buying the merchandise and watching the movies. It can be argued that the cultural power of Star Wars is too big to compare it to a video game story, but the point is still quite valid. If the new stuff is good, why not support it? You can hate survive all you want, but the game is far from bad, and the quote unquote tedious elements of gathering food and water become a distant problem as you move forward in the game. Metal Gear Survive became the straw man's delight. The good news is the smart people can detect straw manning and shut it down in order to create their own opinions based on their experience. People often look for reviewers to give them a heads up on what they should buy and what they should avoid. But Metal Gear Survive is the perfect example of biased and irrational boycotting where reviewers are only there to say bad things and they leave out very obvious positive aspects of the game, you can be sure that your best bet is to try it out yourself. With Survive, 90% of the negative things you hear are not even related to the game itself, which is why so many rationally biased reviewers decided to exacerbate the few flaws they found in the game. Fortunately, after checking quite a few reviews for Survive, I did find intelligent and uncompromised reviews that offered their audience an honest view on the good and the bad that the game had to offer. When a game is good, companies will try to milk it. This has been happening forever, but it seems that people only complain about that when they feel quote unquote betrayed by their imaginary connection to the creators of the products they buy. There is a distinctive line that separates listening to your customers and doing what your customers want. If it were up to customers to decide, products would be made to cater to all of their needs and wishes, while maintaining affordability and convenience. That is not going to be profitable to companies, so they will often do their best to listen while making sure that they are earning as much as possible. With all of that said, I bring up a very important question. Why do people play video games? That seems like a question that everyone has a way of answering differently. But the reason people play video games is the same reason why they watch movies, go to clubs, or visit amusement parks. People play video games to avoid boredom. Because the last thing we want in life is to be bored. We fear boredom even more than death but we're often unable to see this reality. This is the reason why people get upset when their entertainment loses quality. The problem is that sometimes that entertainment needs to evolve in order to keep the fun factor strong. Metal Gear had already started to reach a plateau and the fun was slowly wearing down. This is the reason why Metal Gear Solid 4 was the perfect way to end the series in terms of the story of Naked Snake and Sons. Anything that comes after needs to either go back in time or create spin-offs and expansions that branch out of the main story. But the story can only go so far back or so far forward without losing momentum. We all love the stories behind Big Boss and Solid Snake, but these characters are not like Mario or Sonic. Characters in video games can easily be milked when they have a shallow and simplistic story behind them. No one cares if Mario managed to rescue Peach, because there's no substance behind that story. No pun intended. Mario is a character that shines for fun gameplay, while characters like Big Boss and Solid Snake are overwhelmed with history and conflicting occurrences. The longer a complex character is featured in video games, the harder it gets for the story to stay fresh and the harder it gets for the writers to avoid creating serious conflicting issues that the hardcore fans won't let them get away with.
In episode 2F09, when Ichi plays Scratchy's skeleton like a xylophone, he strikes the same rib twice in succession, yet he produces two clearly different tones. We can all forgive Mario and Sonic for having silly and extremely forgettable stories behind their games, because that's always been the case. But people have a hard time forgiving Konami for milking the once engaging and immersive story behind those characters. This is the reason why Metal Gear as we once knew it had to die and be reborn. What would people expect at this point from Metal Gear? Solid Snake the geriatric adventures? Perhaps the hardcore fan of Metal Gear wanted things wrapped up after Metal Gear 4 because they felt their beloved game deserved a graceful death. But corporations don't see it that way. A graceful death for a product means milking it until it stops earning and it starts becoming a burden. Metal Gear as a video game series does not need to die, but the focus of the story had to shift. Think of Naked Snake and Solid Snake as Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker. Their stories have already been looked at from top to bottom, and we have seen their past and future. This is the reason why Disney made the right choice by laying them to rest with the power to revisit them briefly in movies that focus on other characters and their past. Metal Gear Survive was cursed by circumstances that generated negativity and downright hate from fanatical followers of the series. There's a big difference between being a fan and being fanatical. It was fanatics that gave Survive nothing but hate and didn't even bother mentioning the many positive aspects of the game. In my opinion, Survive is well worth the purchase for the experience it provides. Kojima gave us some great Metal Gear experiences, but someone else is now in charge of keeping it alive. And to be perfectly honest, I feel that they created an excellent game with the Fox engine. One that is not Metal Gear canon, but one that borrows a lot of great things from the best Metal Gear title gameplay-wise and also brings something new and interesting to the series. As far as the Konami hate, I find it hypocritical that some people wearing certain brand clothes and shoes that are manufactured out of slave labor are actually saying that they won't support Konami because they mistreat their workers. Those who complain about employees being treated unfairly need to do their homework on how Japanese corporations in general treat their workers. Once they do, their arguments will no longer be valid. You do have those who are willing to start an intelligent debate, but when it comes to the hate towards Konami, it seems like most people are simply following the trend of hating the company to avoid feeling left out of the popular opinion in the community. Because I want to fit in. In conclusion, Metal Gear Survive is a huge fan service to Metal Gear Solid 5 without the main characters of the franchise being involved. But you do get to see many gadgets, areas, and even extremely popular creations from the Metal Gear Solid universe in Survive. This includes recent events that implement characters and gear from Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 4. I can safely say that I will continue to support both Konami and Kojima as long as they make quality games. Kojima has done an excellent job so far and we're all waiting to see what Dead Stranding has to offer. Konami has created a very good game with Survive, but one that was meant to take the bullet for the franchise in order for Metal Gear to move forward without its creator. To say I will stop supporting Kojima is like saying I will stop listening to Guns N' Roses because people think that Axel is a douchebag. Just like saying I will stop supporting Konami would be like saying I'm never buying Kellogg cereals again because they fired one of their top earning executives and decided to create a new cereal that is entirely different from what everyone expected. Hopefully people can start looking past the origins of games and start focusing on their quality. Metal Gear Survive is a great game that is worth checking out. That is of course unless you are too busy feeling emotionally attached 
to a conflict that had absolutely nothing to do with you. I always welcome and encourage intelligent debate, so I would love to hear your opinion in the comment section. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to get updates on upcoming reviews and videos.